Hello and welcome to the pop-off where we talk about the games industry and all things gaming related, including and especially today, gaming hardware. Uh, I'm Matthew Buzzy. On with me is Chris Stobing and uh, we have a lot of announcements to go through, all courtesy of NVIDIA who held a big press conference today and showed off a lot of good new hardware. Chris, do you want to take us off with the highlights? Sure. So as the rumor mill already kind of predicted, we, ha we, saw about, uh, we saw three new cards today from NVIDIA uh, refreshing their old RTX 20 series line of GPUs. The first is the RTX 3080, which is the flagship model and will kind of carry most gamers uh, to where they want to go. Uh, the next is the RTX 3070, which is a little bit lower tier, but still quite a bit more powerful than the previous generation. And then we have the RTX 3090, which despite being branded sort of in the same window or the same uh, tiers as the rest of the cards is quite a bit more expensive and looks to be taking the place of the previous uh, content creator side of things, um, the RTX 3090. Uh, but uh, it's, uh, it, it used to be called the RTX Titan, and now it seems like they're, they're kind of merging it with the branding of their gaming GPU. Sure, keep the, keep the brand similar. They're already a little confusing, so you might as well just put a number on everything, put it all in a series, and, um, and call it a day. Exactly. Um, so you mentioned that uh, these are kind of tiered. Um, you talk about the price of each a little bit. The 3070 right now is the lowest new starting point for these 30 series GPUs, but it goes up from there, um, and uh, that starts at $500 for the 3070. But um, talk about those price points and kind of what the 3080 goes for. Sure. So to start, the rumor mill was off on this, which um, happens sometimes, and it's starting to lead some weird uh, theories that NVIDIA seeded some incorrect information to the sites, but who knows? Every, every card was off by exactly $100, so we got a little bit of a discount compared to the, what the rumor mill thought it was going to be, but the RTX 3080 is going to be going through $699, and the RTX 3090 is going to be going for $1399, which again puts it in that much higher tier for content creators and that kind of thing, or your most extreme gamers that you're going to find. Yeah, um, and they, obviously we've not tested it ourselves. Um, one outlet, Digital Foundry, did actually get uh, an early hands-on preview, not full extensive tests, but a preview to get a look at what it can do. Um, but we have not been able to confirm that yet. So all we have right now is NVIDIA's word and that early testing to go on. Um, that said, when you talk a little bit about what they claim the performance is going to be as, as compared to uh, the previous GPUs, because I will say the prices are roughly the same, but the performance, uh, it's not, <laughs> according to them. Yeah, so according to NVIDIA, and this we have to put heavy quotes around that, according to NVIDIA, because there was really not a lot shown off uh, as far as performance goes, but according to NVIDIA, we can expect up to or a little bit over two times the performance in ray tracing. This is the only thing that they were very particular on in ray tracing uh, performance. And that likely comes down to, uh, I believe uh, I have to look at the slide, but it's you know 1.7 times as many ray tracing cores on board as each card in its previous generation uh, would have in the 20 series. So uh, 1.7 times as many uh, ray tracing cores, uh, 2.4, don't quote me on that, I have to look at the slide again, but some multiple of 2X uh, of DLSS cores, of tensor cores as they're better known. Um, and then just more CUDA cores in general. Um, so we're seeing subtle improvements across the board and those have led up to what could be up to two times performance. But again, there's not a lot of specificity here. We don't really know if that's with RTX and DLSS turned on, which as we know, and we've seen in games like Death Stranding can really increase performance, basically just ba on the back of the tensor cores or on the back of the ray tracing cores. We don't know if this necessarily translates to two times performance in general games. We don't know if these are games that are specific specifically friendly to NVIDIA cards like Final Fantasy 15 or what, we're kind of left in the dark there. So what we do have, as you mentioned, are Digital Foundry's numbers, which look promising. Like let's, let's not discredit NVIDIA here. There could be a lot on offer here. We just, we don't have a way of confirming it. And then, like we said, NVIDIA was really light on details in the actual presentation. Sure. So for $800 for the 3080 and um, for 500 for the 3070, you're getting supposedly better than 2080, 2080 Ti numbers. Um, which sounds great. Maybe less great if you're someone who bought a 2080 somewhat recently and you're kind of you're kind of feeling a little hard done by because for the same price now you're getting this huge jump in performance. But that's kind of always the way it goes uh, with with graphics cards and with upgrades. I mean, um, there's always something better around the corner. Um, I myself have a 2080 Super and I'm now looking at the at the 3080 kind of like, well, maybe maybe I should get on board. Um, so yeah, there's there's a lot to like in theory. 
you mentioned you mentioned the ray tracing numbers. I think that is interesting that they focused on that, which I do kind of get. We'll see what the general frame rate performance improvements are, but um, focusing on the ray tracing side, I think we know we knew when the 2080 and the 2070 were first announced, and they were talking about ray tracing, and everyone's saying how demanding it was going to be. In the back of most enthusiasts' head, people knew that the second generation of these ray tracing GPUs would be the ones that could really do it well at high frame rates. Um, the current cards can do it, uh, depending on the game, depending on your other components. Um, you can play games with ray tracing on. It is definitely possible. You can get it at 60 frames, depending on the game. And DLSS, uh, which is great, um, does go a long way with that. But um, I, I think everyone kind of knows that you're taking a big performance hit right now if you want to turn ray tracing on in these games. Um, and if these new GPUs can actually push those at, at much higher than 60 frames more easily with or without DLSS, um, that is a that is a huge improvement. So I get kind of why they focused on that. Yeah, and I mean that you know it's if if there's any kind of hallmark that we can point to for real performance that they've actually kind of shared. Again, it's it's very limited and we can't verify it. But um, uh, the the claim of being able to play 8K in 60 FPS. That was sort of a big a big reveal for them to say that these new cards, specifically the 3090, will be uh, 8K ready and able to do 8K 60 FPS for games like Doom Eternal Control, a couple other ones that I think they showed off in the video. Um, and, you know, again, I'm assuming, I, I'm not even assuming, I think that was on the video that they said this is what DLSS turned on. We don't know what version of DLSS. We don't know if it's 2.0 or 3.0. And we could talk about DLSS 3.0. But um, yeah, there was, uh, that's really the only thing that we can point to and say, okay, well, if it can do 8K 60 FPS, that suggests that it could do 4K 120 FPS or something in that realm. Mm -hmm. So we'll just kind of have to wait and see uh, when more hard, hard concrete numbers start coming out. Yeah, um, and as far as when we will start seeing that ourselves, September 17th is the release date for the 3080. Uh, the 3070 is a bit behind in October, um, but not too, not too far behind, um, which is a good segue uh, to both because you mentioned DLSS 3.0 and because there might be more GPUs out there, a good segue into what we did not see. Um, DLSS 2.0 is still the, is still the uh, available offering. Um, there was no card lower than the 3070, so the 3060 may or may not exist probably does exist. They also announced the 2060 later than they did the 2070 and the 2080. But uh, if you're looking for a lower entry point, sort of more mainstream RTX uh, GPU, you will have to seemingly wait a bit, possibly indefinitely, probably not indefinitely. Yeah, I mean, it's 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 sort of a, a open secret that, you know, the 3060, it exists, we know it exists, we just know absolutely nothing about it. I mean, for the rumor mill, you know, we've been able to find information on the 3090, 3080, and 3070 way ahead of this launch. Uh, most of the specs were already known. Everything is a good, no, a good amount of stuff has actually been confirmed aside from the prices which were off. Um, but uh, yeah, there was a, there was a leaked slide uh, supposedly that came out um, a couple months ago actually and it was talking about DLSS 3.0 and it was supposedly not a pre presentation slide it was a leaked internal slide from NVIDIA this was not something that was supposed to go up today and we saw it earlier something like that this is something that NVIDIA was trading internally with its own engineers talking about DLSS 3.0 the suggestion in that slide and again this is all heavy speculation rumors you know we nothing has been confirmed by NVIDIA at all um, but is that DLSS 3.0 will take uh, a big limitation of DLSS 2.0 right now in that every game that wants to use DLSS needs to be trained on their neural network and it would expand it to any game that uses what's known as uh, temporal anti-aliasing or TAA for short. Um, and that's a huge number of games. There's tons of games that use TAA and it's just sort of a style of anti-aliasing. That is one of the more resource heavy ones of doing it, but it's also one, one of the ones that looks best. Um, mm -hmm. And if DLSS 3.0 is, is, is possible to be integrate into all of those games all at once, that's a huge move. I mean, that brings the support for DLSS 2.0, which is currently on, I think, six or seven games in total, most of which are not big titles, um, up to, you know, potentially hundreds or even thousands. Um, that was going to be a big thing because DLSS 2.0 has significant and verifiable humongous performance upgrades. I mean, you can see up to 40% improvement, uh, both in uh, performance and an increase in visual acuity in games like Death Stranding. And so if that were implemented across hundreds of games or thousands of games, and all it took is a driver update for thousands of games to run 40% faster, that would be a huge selling point for RTX cards. The fact that DLSS 3.0 wasn't shown off today is telling 
probably for how difficult it is to pull something like that off. Because I'm sure, I'm sure Jensen wanted to show that off today. And, and if those leaked internal slides are true, they had planned to, but they might just be running into some more tech problems. Like, you know, DLSS 1.0 was not great. Mm -hmm. And then DLSS 2.0 has gotten better, but it's a very limited implementation. So I'm sure that when they hit with 3.0, they really want it to be this big launch that covers everything all at once. And uh, we might see that down the line. We might, might be another year or so, you know, we have no idea at this point, but um, I'm sure, I'm it sure holds a lot of problems. It's very possible that, uh, very possible that COVID-19 also delayed their initial plans, made it a little bit harder to work on these things if people are out of office. Um, and one brief note for the, uh, the 3090, which you did hear correctly, is $1,500. That will drop on September 24th, and that is a replacement for the Titan, as Chris mentioned, not the 2080 Ti. So if you're seeing that, I'm wondering why now the new consumer top card is, is so expensive and you're you're crying uh, at the thought of that price tag. That's not really for most users. It's kind of creator, creator replacement. 24 gigs of VRAM though is pretty insane. Um, and on a note on all of the prices in general, those are NVIDIA's uh, reference card prices, what they're saying to MSRP is for their GPUs, manufacturers from there, we'll have to see what they do with the price. Maybe the rumors will prove true, Chris, and the $100 price difference will appear <laughs> based on what people do with the reference cards uh, versus the manufacturer cards. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's always a risk, you know. I mean, for technically, technically, the 2080 Ti has always had an MSRP of $999. Even when it was announced, it was $999. Even today, even with the new GPU announcements, it'll be rare that you could find one probably for less than $1,100, uh, more likely closer to $1,200 or $1,300. So while the MSRP of the cards is seemingly quite low, availability and what the AIB, uh, third party AIB partners do, that's really going to determine where these prices settle. Yes, um, so we'll have to see. It won't be too long because as we mentioned, these come out this month. So uh, a couple of weeks of waiting, we'll have most of the answers to these questions. Um, exactly, yep. Um, so otherwise, uh, just to wrap up, NVIDIA did show off a couple other cool things that were not the GPU. Um, most of them were, were software based, whether built into GeForce Experience or separate. Um, that includes a couple of cool game streaming features, including uh, a digital green screen, replace the need for you to buy a physical green screen and mount it behind you, the screen. So you can put your gameplay behind you while you play. Uh, you can put a virtual background so you're floating in space behind you while you play. Um, you can blur your real life background, which makes it look a little nicer, especially if there's a messy background behind you. Um, audio noise removal, which I think is like an advancement, <laughs> which I think is an advancement on what they've been doing with RTX voice. Um, and uh, that kind of mutes any background noise. Doorbell, dog barking, people talking in the background. Uh, it kind of cuts that out and only lets your voice come through. They used, again, their AI learning algorithms to do that. So all that stuff's pretty cool. It'll be built in um, some of this to GeForce Experience and as a separate download um, for the NVIDIA broadcast. will contain a couple of those things. Um, so, I mean, some neat additions for essentially free. I'll take that. Um, auto frame as well can track your head. Um, and those are all available with, uh, with any of the RTX GPUs. So uh, that's a nice free upgrade. Um, one more thing they showed is Reflex, which is available for the 900, uh, GTX 900 GPUs and up. You can use uh, NVIDIA Reflex um, to reduce your in-game latency. We'll see if this is one of those things that is a little bit marketing speak, could be, could be reality. They reduce your latency so that you have better response time. So if you see an enemy player, you know, run past a small, a small line of sight, uh, the time between you seeing that and clicking the mouse button, uh, there's built-in delay to that. So this is aiming to reduce that built-in delay, so you actually have a better chance to hit them. Um, they just say Reflex is, is a universal plugin, so like we'll have to see what exactly um, it does. They did talk a lot about Valorant. That was their kind of uh, showpiece game for a lot of the performance-based stuff they mentioned today. Okay. Um, and there's going to be a new performance tab in uh, the GeForce experience to deal with all these and show your sort of system specs and stuff. So that's pretty cool. I think just a, a neat, and for gamers who already own the cards, free way to upgrade your performance and kind of shows uh, that they're putting the uh, AI learning stuff to task in things other than the GPUs themselves, um, getting kind of all sorts of, uh, of uh, different software improvements out of that. So that's neat. Um, overall, a pretty good day. I think the pure performance of these new GPUs is really appealing if it lives up to sort of what they said it would. Early returns looking pretty positive. Um, I think when the 20 series launched, there was a slight disappointment that the, the raw frame rate improvements were not as good as people wanted. And they were really all about the ray tracing because it was the new thing, which is very cool. But this time, if there's a big jump in the frame performance and in the ray tracing frame rate performance, um, People will be very happy. I think so far, most of the reception I've seen has been pretty positive. I feel I feel pretty good about it. Um, you know, any, any final thoughts? 
Um, yeah, no, I mean, it's, if it, like, like you said, if, if they live up to the promises of what few there were, but, uh, you know, there were some big ones, um, it'll be, it'll be huge. You know, I mean, um, I was reading something earlier where they were talking about, you know, year over or generation over generation improvement. Right. And, uh, you know, sometimes it, I think it was 60% between the 10 series and the 20 series. Uh, if we're talking about two X, we're talking about 100%, a 100% improvement at Matt, let's say in, in optimal scenarios, RTX, DLSS, everything is running exactly the way they want it. Uh, you might be seeing a, a 100% or a 2x improvement, which would be quite a bit more than we've seen in the past. Um, and again, if, if DLSS really lives up to its promise, that could go even higher uh, as, as more games get integrated into that system. So it's, uh, it's an exciting time to be an NVIDIA customer. We still haven't heard anything from AMD, no response, no uh, press release, no kind of big knobby news. Uh, we're <laughs> sure that's coming uh, down the pipeline, but the rumor mill has been pretty quiet there. But uh, today is NVIDIA's day and they definitely uh, had a lot to show off, so. Definitely. Um, yeah, that is that is about it for us. We have coverage of all these things in even more detail on PCMag.com. You can visit and read a story on the GPUs and our GPU impressions, as well as the broadcasting features that they announced. So go ahead and check that out and definitely check back later this month for full reviews of the GPUs. Um, I'm sure Chris will be put to task on those and uh, we'll be able to confirm a lot of the performance claims and, and benchmark these. Um, so Kingdom Come and get you some get you some answers. Um, so you can run out and buy one yourself. Um, thank you so much for watching. I'm Matthew Buzzi. This has been Chris Stobing. Uh, thanks for watching and check back again soon.